All right, guys, now we're going to do bulk installation, right, to see how that works. So first thing I'm going to do, be installed. I know what I want to accomplish. I've got all these websites on my list. I already put the first website on the first one, so I don't need to install to that one again. But I do need to install to the rest. So I'm going to do a batch installation. And I'm going to put that one file I have or whatever combination of, um, you know, files in my file repository, right, across all those websites. Okay, so since it's easy to think in terms of just doing one at a time, that's the point, right? So we're going to install that one um, file in our file repository, you know, the zip file and the SQL file, but we're going to install it to all 100 websites or at least 99 of them, right? Not the one that we did singly um, because that one's already done. But having said that, if I had two, three, four, five projects and I was interweaving them, then yeah, I mean, I could interweave all those zip and SQL files. I would not break the match. I'd have, you know, 1.zip go with 1.sql, 2.zip goes with 2.sql, right? Don't mix those up. But you can put the one set on the one website, another set on another website, another set on another website in one motion. So yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. Let me go ahead and download this. This is where we got even bigger, crazier, zanier file. You, you're not really gonna find much use to it, so <laughs> let's just stick with this, okay? That's for sort of an older run. We almost should take it out just to avoid confusion, although it does have some interesting notes. If you take it down, you might read the first tab and understand what's going on with the notes. It's just kind of interesting. All right, so take a look. Download sample, we got our sample. We're gonna open it. That guides us, right? That tells us the information we need. Cool thing about these samples, right, is that they tell us what we need to give. All right, check this out. It says something weird, server and domain. Let me just clarify. Server is your top level domains. It's what you're almost always going to put. Well, you will. You will always put in those top 25 domains you bought. Now, this is whether you're going to use the same domain again because it's the top level domain. Right? So if it is the top level domain, then whatever you put here, you're going to copy to here. That's it. That's simple. But if some of these are add on domains, then think what that could mean. What that could mean. This could be, okay, this could be uh, tld.com, right? Top level domain. And um, this could be the same tld.com, okay? Because maybe you only have that one C panel where this is tld.com you're gonna install to, maybe. But then the next one could be addon1.com, get it? So you could keep going, couldn't you? And then that could be like add-on one, two, three, four, five, you know, does that make sense? So if you only had one cPanel with your one domain name, your top level domain, that would be your one cPanel. And you may not even want to install to that. Delete, shift cells up, because you might keep your main project on there and all you want to do is put on these add-on domains. What are these? These are the um, like $10 domain names that you bought from GoDaddy and you attach them to your one C panel as add-on domains, okay? You guys either know how to do that or you don't, but it's an option in your C panel to do. Reality check is this. For Google, these websites belong to this one website. These are just folders on this website, so it's only one website. You can't backlink yourself with these to these. They have to be on separate cPanels. But having said that, because otherwise for Google, it's really the same website, and these are just shortcut links to get to certain folders within that website, okay? Because that's how Google's going to see it, okay? But if a guy's not going to pay you enough money for a whole cPanel, he's trying to pay you cheap, or if you're offering something for cheap, and the guy's going to go handing out cards anyway with his website that you're making for him, so then in that case, you may as well just put each next domain name on the same cPanel. You don't have to buy more cPanels. Okay. Now, having said that, let's do some, some down and dirty work, right? Let's actually make something happen. So I know I need my list of domains without question, right? So let me at least open that file. Because I got this list of domain names, don't I? So I'm going to copy that. And here it is. And you guys probably already caught what I did, right? Control V. Okay. 
control V again because they're all top level domains, but I do not have any add on domains on there. So you saw what I did, right? That was the first website I already installed that one. So I'm going to delete that, right? Because I'm not going to bulk install. Delete. Shift cells up. Okay. Now, let's check this out for a minute. If you had your own server, okay, what does the, what's the difference? The difference is you can create your own cPanels at will, right, on your own server, okay? Otherwise, cPanels have to cost something. Like on our server, they're 50 bucks each, and that's more than a fair price. If you go and get servers individually, you, you know, standalone accounts, they're more expensive for sure, and they have more throttled options. We give you a lot more room than they do. Okay, they, they charge you for extra add-on domains or extra bandwidth or extra storage or whatever, you know, and we don't. All right, the only thing we don't let you do is, is bulk blast emails through our server. It doesn't work. There, there are limits on how many emails you can send per hour, right? So that you have to use your own email system because, you know, we don't want everyone to use our server to blast emails out. <laughs> All right, so subdomain, I'm going to clear that because this should be blank because we're not going to install anything to a subdomain. These panels don't work on subdomains. They will work on subdomains, but you cannot generate sitemaps on subdomains. Okay. Just something to keep in mind. Now, stop and think for a minute. I've been talking because I'm explaining, but what did I do again so far? Really, it's pretty simple. I got my list of domain names from here, copied them, right? And all I did was go to batch installation, download the sample, open it, and it asked me for those domain names. So I just copied the domain names and pasted it in twice. And then I got rid of anything from the subdomain column. That's it so far. Let's continue. Database user should be seven uh, characters long. And if you're going to go down, your numbering is going to include another digit pretty soon. So... Oh, by the way, I don't think it really matters. I, you know, I say seven. I don't think it really matters at all. Um, there's a reason that we like seven, though. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to do seven. I think there is a definite reason for seven. All right. So here's how this would look. Database use oh, zero one, for example. DB name, but I'm going to take that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, except that's going to be seven because I'll put a zero in here. Okay. DB pass, same thing now, right? Four, five, six, seven. Now, if I take this, right, I can drag it down. And you see what it did? It took the auto numbering and it recognized when to quit using the zeros and just switch to 10. Isn't that cool? One thing to keep in mind, I made this pretty involved. That's just to show you extra security. Could you have the exact same database username and pass all the way down? Yes. Why? Because it's one case for each domain. So there you go. All right. It's for each domain. It was like this set of information on here, that set of information could be the same as that set, but it works because it's over here. It's on that one. Okay, but just for security's sake, it's kind of good to play around with it. Nobody would know which of these belongs with which of those, so don't worry about it. All right, zip file and SQL file. All right, we'll come to these last. This is fun, it's easy, but before we do, let's just finish the rest of what we care about. User pass, that would have been like our Bob Jenkins, right? 789. Security key, that would be our initial, right? Now, why am I putting that stuff in here again? Just to show you. Now, be careful of one thing. This ends in a number. So if you pull it down, of course, it's going to auto number. Do you want that? Maybe. If you care about the security key so you know how to log in and out, but you want the passes to be different because these are different clients, then come up with different passes. No problem. And auto number, who's going to know? But... If, um, if that's supposed to be for Bob every time, then just, you know, get it in there twice, copy, paste, and then drag down. That way it always stays the same, right? When you drag down the set of two, it will always stay the same, okay? All right, so anyway, what do we care about? I guess I'll just continue at this point this way, won't I? May as well. 
All right, now what? Email ID, remove. Now again, it could be 100 different guys, right? I could paste in a list of 100 different emails. And you know what, for fun of it, I'll make it two. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna highlight that just so I can, as though click, but not click, right click, so I can remove the hyperlinks, okay? Double click up here. Now, that way, if I highlight those two and drag it down, see what it does? It keeps going back and forth. You'll see. Yep, there. So that's done. Connection, that needs to go down. That's done. File rules, database rules. We don't need any file rules or database rules. Delete. So we are virtually done with our file here, aren't we? The last thing we have is to copy from the repository for each of these, right? Clear contents. So how do we do that? And then the whole thing is here, right? The whole thing. So let's just do that. Let's go to our file repository. Okay. I'm going to copy that file path by hitting the copy button, copy path. That's for the zip file. Okay. Paste. Wap. Look at that. It figured out the path. Now I'm going to go do the other one for the SQL file, sorry. All right, let's get that one. I mean, it's probably the same. I could have, and, and if it was, I could have just hand typed it, right? Like I could copy that over and change .zip to .sql. Uh, I'm just doing this to be exact, right? Make sure it absolutely matches. Now, if I add other zip files and SQLs, like that's one thing to install. If I wanna install another one that I have here, I would go copy those paths. Whoops, whoops, sorry. Yeah, but I don't. I only have the one in this case, so I'm just going to copy that down. Or else I would paste my other ones here, highlight all four, and drag them, and it'll drag them down the way it did the email. So it would, be, it would go A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, all over again. Okay, so I'm just going to take that and drag that set down. See that? We're done. We're done. I can save this. This and I can move it into my GDR folder and stuff and have it with everything else. What do I do now? What do you think? I, I just, you know, I shift click, <laughs> come all the way down and shift click one last time. There, I got the whole thing, right? Copy it. And that is for 99, isn't it? Yeah, because it says 100, but that's because I got a header row. Boom, there's my header row. Okay, and what would I do? Batch, paste the whole thing in there, hit process, and it's gonna make sure it can do all this stuff, right? And it's probably gonna tell me two websites I cannot do this on. <laughs> the brisk garage door, it's probably why I got hung up after all. And then the other one, the aha, see that? Agile garage crew, door crew, and it got it's gonna get stuck here too, right? Everything else is going to be good. You know what that tells me? Clean up my file. Agile Garage Door Crew is a bad domain name for whatever reason or it's not set up right. So on this particular run, I'm going to take that entry out. Delete. I can deal with it some other day. And then where's my other one? Is the brisk, whichever one it was. GarageDoorPlacement.com? Yes, BriskGarageDoorPlacement.com. Oh. Delete. So, isn't that cool? The system is keeping you from making mistakes. I'm gonna shift click all the way across at the bottom, copy, and let's do this again. So discard the list, clear the data, paste it in this time, process. Ooh, that went quick, didn't it? Look at that. When there is not an issue, everything verifies extremely fast, doesn't it? Isn't that great? So now comes the fun part. We are gonna start the installation and we may as well keep track of when it got started, right? 224 now, yes. And we're just gonna let this thing run. This is gonna do, what, 97 installations, is that right? Because we're not doing the 24 hour one. 
and we're not doing the other two, but we're doing everything else in our list. So that's 97. So yeah, how long does it take to do nine? It already finished three. <laughs> it has to do them one at a time and it will. So you're just gonna wait for it to get down through the list. You may as well put this at the bottom now and just come back and glance in the room every so often and wait for this bar to quit moving. You know, wait to see the bottom ones and the pop-up to say, hey, everything is done, right? But there you go. I mean, you can leave. You can go to lunch. You can go do something else, whatever you'd like. You don't need to sit here anymore. If this is installing a hundred or a thousand, you're done. And so anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and let this thing run. Um, I'll pause the recording, but I'll let this run anyway and just get a sense of how long it'll take to finish this off, right? <clears throat> Oh, I don't see a point in doing that. Let's just do math on how long it's been for what it's been. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this is the 10th. So what do we think? It's installing like for a minute anyway, right? Yeah, 1,000, 2,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1,000, 11, 12, 13, okay. So it's either installing four or five every minute. Can you imagine that? Four to five a minute? So then if it's doing 100, you're talking about like 20 minutes, you know? Maybe a little longer, 20, 25 minutes. So when you come back to it again, how long did it take for us to find domain names, buy domain names, create the C panels, add the domain names to our website list, prepare our um, zip file with some images that we cared about somehow. That's just however long it took us to get images. Let's say, let's say you worked at it, got some really good images and resized them, right? You're talking about, I don't care. Do you want to say half an hour? Okay. So you got that at the ready and compile than this. And this is going to be installed in under half an hour. So you're talking about like in an hour and a half, you go from not having domain names to having 100 live websites. And your VAR sheet that you prepared for this thing is good for all of them. That's pretty amazing, right? It's just really amazing how far you can be, um, how far you can go already with all the setup and that's exactly the point this is what you got this level of real power and um this is the value you get out of it okay i hope you found that interesting i'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the series up other stuff we can talk about later one question you're going to have and i haven't checked it you guys can always test on your own what if uh, i already generated a site map on the first website a big one you know, 1,000 rows or 5,000 rows or even 10,000 rows, right? We say, please don't put more than 10,000 rows per website, right? That's just so that we have some control over uh, how much stuff is on the server. Now, our server, right? On your server, you can do whatever you want. Okay, now, say you already set up the first one and did 10,000 rows. Then can you do this bit? with the installation options where you create the portable panel and you download it and it already has those 10,000 rows. And then that way, when you ins batch install it, it already has 10,000 completed rows, you know, for all those websites. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? I think it works. You know, you can test, but I think it will work. And what would that mean? Then you just need to log into each of those websites to um, randomize the front page. I got a question. What's the fastest, easiest way to log into all the websites in a case like that? Well, you got your security key, don't you? So can we think of what the URL could be? I'll just show you, okay? I'd put this somewhere. This would be like easy access, right? I call it a file like instant access or something, you know? Now, I want to put a slash administrator, but when I put a slash, it thinks I'm doing something about controls. So that doesn't work. But what does work? You put an apostrophe, then a slash, 
which seems weird. It's like, what's with the apostrophe? It's a trick. Excel knows that means that you're, it's like an escape key at the beginning. So just administrator slash var dot php question mark key equals all, or, or I'm sorry, what initial. See how we got rid of the apostrophe at the beginning? Yeah, it did. I mean, it's still there if you click on it, but it's not here, right? And that's because the system knew what went on. So I'm going to drag that down because it's going to be the same for all the websites, isn't it? Now what? This can, this next column I'm going to build to finish this by putting it together, this can equal that ampersand, you know, the and symbol above your number seven. Shift seven gives you that. And that. Wow. Now, isn't that cool? So now, download that. Ooh. Now, it's not... Oh, I got to come up too, don't I? I didn't realize I left some of the top. Okay. Now, two bits of information I want to give you real quick. This is not actually uh, real links yet because, see, it's formulas. But if we highlight the whole column now that we're done with it, we can copy it and paste it in place right here. We're going to paste it right where we copied it as values. So this thing with values. Okay. Now each of these are real true actual values. So I don't even need these first two columns for that anymore. Delete. Okay. You can double click that just to see it in one, one column, right? So now if I were to go to here, or here, let's just take one of the next ones down, right? Like even, even that one right there, copy. Okay, I'm just guessing. And I were to go to here. Look at that. It logged me right into that panel immediately, right? So I can do whatever I want in there. If I wanted to change, here's the point. Say I did upload it and say it did already have a sitemap. So what I want to do now, if, if it did then there should be a button here that says generate random variables. The button will not be there if there's no sitemap because there are no sitemap entries, no random rows to work with. Okay. You would actually have to drag and drop your virus sheet, give it a, you know, upload it, give it a name, submit, and then generate the batch to create your whatever, your thousand, starting with one, boom. And then when all that's done, then what? Then, oh, do you know what's interesting? I don't even know. I, I don't think that I had a var sheet in here, but what if I did? <laughs> I just wonder what it's going to say. I haven't even thought about this. Hmm. Look at that. Isn't that weird? It makes me wonder. I got to wonder now. Is there? Oh, oh, oh. take a look at that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So now the next point is this. On here, if I go back to the Varsheet loader, I've got a new button called Generate Random Variables. What do you think that does? That randomizes the variables on the front end. All these variables here on the front end, the first few pages, the main pages here. So all those, uh, all my front ends get to be randomized just by hitting the button. It did it. So apparently if I come back here again. Yeah. Oh, nice. So all my front end pages of each website are different, which is necessary. Google wants that. <laughs> Google does not want to see the same front pages on different websites, right? Look at that. Even the, the map, right, is now Louisville instead of Seattle or whatever, Denver. So there you have it, right? So every one of your websites that you immediately log into, you can generate the sitemap really fast, and then you can randomize the front end really fast, right? That's if the VAR sheet was the one you chose in the first place, okay? And again, maybe if you created the uh, sitemap first, then you can generate the sitemap onto all the other websites, then you can come back in. Word to the wise. Don't generate the sitemap first and then copy the whole thing because you're going to wind up with the exact same pages in your sitemap of all those websites. 
Google doesn't want to see the exact same pages, does it? Right. So it's better not to do that. You can have the VAR sheet in here that you like. So even back here, when you did your whole create portable panel bit in the first place, it's because you already set it up with the VAR sheet you wanted with all your changes. Okay. That way, then when you created your portable panel into your file repository, and gave it a name, renamed the file, the zip file and SQL file, that's for that project complete with the VAR sheet. That way, now when you're installing it like this, that perfect VAR sheet that you love, because it's the right VAR sheet, look how far this has gotten just while we chat. <laughs> Jeez. All right, so that perfect VAR sheet would be in every one of those websites. And again, what if you had downloaded two versions, one for one industry and one for another industry? So you downloaded the one with the first VAR sheet. Then you downloaded uh, the other one with the second VAR sheet that you uploaded. Okay, Because then you would, you would come here in between and upload the other VAR sheet and set it all up for the other project. Like I did with the pest control one. That way now when you download that you can call it pest control project. Right? With its zip file and zip. And it will have the VAR sheet in it. Okay, so by the time you install it to all those different websites, it's got, you know, even if you're mixing and matching between these templates and you're doing different projects, all of these different projects are going to be live. They're going to work. They're going to each have their own VAR sheets and they're ready for you to just generate rows so they're unique and then hit the button for randomizing the front end so the front end of all those websites are unique. How long do you really think it would take you to do that since you have all these links in front of you, all these initials, okay? No time at all. Just go one to the next, to the next, to the next, copy, paste, or just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Go in there and hit the buttons, right? If you wanted to change this to the other page, right, the one for the variables, you know how easy that is? Go find it, first of all. Discover what that page name is. Aha! Instead of var.php, it's var sheet that PHP, right? Let me go deal with that. Control H, change var.php to varsheet.php, replace all. There, it put me on the page right away. So if I just go here, for example, okay, again, I'm just choosing a random. I'm gonna go, whap. I'm already there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna generate. <laughs> You know, like, let's say 500 rows, one, you know, just to be quicker, okay? You could do different numbers, too, you know, just to create some randomness in there. And then just go back to it again, Farsheet Loader, so that I can hit this. And it's done. And if I were to look, we'll see. Yeah, sometimes it kind of comes off that way, but let's just see what we do get now, right? Yep. How's that? And other things are different. Just whatever is different for the variables, no matter how many variables I put into the system. See how even these images change on you? Okay. As well as the verbiage here and so on. Yeah. There you go. So, and that's for Memphis. Could we make variables for all these call now buttons? Yeah. And all of these visa buttons? Yeah. All these guarantee buttons? We have a lot of images you can choose from. So you can make all this stuff different. You can make these variables, you know, so that whenever you hit gener generate random front end, it's always different. Even these logos here can be replaced with other logos. Even the background color can be replaced with other background colors. Literally, it's up to you how many things you want to make variable. Okay, more on that later. Fact of the matter is, I think you get the point. And all of this can point to the same link or different links or, you know, whatever you set up in the project. Point is, you can do all this stuff, and it's done. 100 websites, totally done, right? You can do this so efficiently and be able to manipulate and control those websites very efficiently. Okay, I hope you found this interesting. I'm going to go ahead and start getting these training topics up so you guys can see what this is all about. Those of you that have not bought this, okay, this is called the Unlimited Legacy UAP. So instead of going to the website to buy it, we don't have an option there right now, contact me, right? Dave at website-installer.com. Okay, that's easy email for me. 
But what you're really going to need to do to get this, I'm just going to make this point, okay? You're going to send a $2,500 payment, okay? Because this is what it costs for this thing. Totally great power, right? Total control. $2,500 to PayPal at moji-crew.com. That's some PayPal, right? You log into PayPal, hit send money, okay? So this is send 2500 to, you know, hmm, there you go. PayPal emoji dash crew.com. Please include a comment, right? Include U-L-U-A-P, okay? We'll know what that's all about. And what that means is for, our, well, it's for our accounting records, right? So we know what the payment was for later when it's time to do taxes kind of records okay so anyway when you send it right just well we'll do it we'll set this thing up you get 25 c panels for free included in that right which is really cool because it means that you can install your first 25 total websites with 10,000 pages each and no c panel cost it's just the cost of the domain names so you would decide what domain names you want to buy, you know, 25, 10 bucks each or so. There's, you know, 250 bucks, okay? And so then once you buy them for like 250, then you can install them. That means each of your websites, your first 25 websites only cost you like 111 bucks each. You can use them to backlink anything. You can use them to promote anyone. Uh, you can use them as SEO that you did as a project for somebody, you know, external linking in or creating a referral system pointing in. Or if you have your own affiliate programs and you want to point your pages on all these websites there, you can make some projects like on five of the websites, use the other 20 websites to backlink all of those projects. You're creating an empire of power. And then anytime you want to add to it, just get some more C panels, right? For those of you that are doing some direct selling to guys and you want to keep the price down, you don't even need to get more cPanels. You can just get more domain names as add-on domains on those 25 cPanels you already have. So you can put up pro uh, parallel projects for different things, different industries, and you can keep using those same 25 cPanels to do that with. It's just the cost of each next domain name. Okay, there you go. I think you're going to find this is really cool. And it's totally worth it. So what you wind up is your own access to all of this and your copy, obviously, of the legacy UAP. So you can handle all of this work. That's what that's all about. All right. So when I get this payment, obviously, I'll reach out to you or reach out to me. Um, we'll make sure to get you your login information, get you all set up, and you'll be good to go. Okay. All right. Hope you found this interesting.